Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be talking about the five biggest mistakes that I made as an artist, um, and ones that you should try to avoid if you possibly can. Um, so I'm starting with one that I think a lot of people have, especially when they're first learning, and that's um, getting frustrated because of perfectionism. Basically, if you get too riled up about your mistakes, it can cause huge problems for you down the line, and even right away. First of all, it takes all the fun out of it when you're so harsh on yourself that every time you see a mistake, you kind of hate your work. Um, and this is something that I think almost every single artist has run into at some point. Um, I think we all have times when everything we draw just looks a little wrong. It's all a little wonky and we don't think, feel like we can fix it. And um, that's something that you really need to try to get a handle on. I recommend if you're finding yourself getting really frustrated while you draw, um, just to take a break from it. Because usually if you force it and force it and you're still getting really frustrated, um, you're just gonna end up giving yourself art block and burnout. Um, so if you can possibly take a break, please do. And um, that is something that I think is really important to watch out for because again, art is supposed to be fun and it, even if it's a job, like you need to enjoy at least part of it um, because otherwise you're just going to have a terrible time. The next uh, big problem I want to talk about is a really important one, especially if you want to get into big projects or telling stories. Um, this used to be my ultimate crux. So what, when I was younger, I always had story ideas, like pretty much just constantly. There were always like interesting characters and settings and scenes that I would get in my head and I was so excited about them and I just loved them. But um, when I got to attach the ideas, I would just get stuck in this state where I was just planning forever, um, just planning how this comic book or animation or whatever would go, um, thinking about these characters and drawing things that were like sort of related. Um, and I would never actually be able to start the project because I was so, like the idea was so perfect in my head that I didn't want to start it because once you start executing something, that's when you start to see its flaws and you have to address its problems. And it's never as good as you can imagine it in your head. So it's really easy to fall into this trap of just thinking about it forever and never actually making it. But the sad truth is that like, it's never gonna be real unless you make it real. That's the thing about your ideas and your imagination. So you really have to force yourself to um, be willing to see what your idea actually looks like in the real world and be willing to see it change in the real world as you execute it. Because if you don't, it will just never exist. And that's way sadder than you know seeing its flaws in real life. You really want to just force yourself to start the projects you wanna make because like I said, it's the only way that it will come into fruition. I think if, um, if you're really having trouble with this and you're really scared that you'll never be able to get past this point, the best thing to do is to just start. Just draw the first page and just make it happen. And even if you have to redo it later, um, just being able to start it will really help you out. At least that's what worked for me and my, um, my comic. Because Unfamiliar was majorly one of those projects for me. I, I got stuck planning it for almost an entire year before I had the courage to actually try and make it a real thing. The next mistake I'm going to talk about is kind of a technical one, and again, this is one I think that people have a lot of trouble with in the, their very beginnings, um, and that is getting stuck in your comfort zone. Now, there is nothing wrong with developing a style and having specific things that you really like to draw. Obviously, I'm not saying that that's a bad idea because clearly there are things that I draw over and over and I stick very closely to a similar style. But when I was younger, I was much too extreme about it. Um, basically, there was like one angle that I was comfortable drawing people at. I would draw their faces at like 45 degrees and I would draw them from the shoulders up and that was basically it. Um, and I got so comfortable doing just this one thing Thing that it ended up making all my drawings look pretty much exactly the same, which is not good. Um, you don't want your work to be boring, and the best way to make your work boring is to draw the same thing over and over without any sort of differentiation. Um, really, I only separated my characters by like height and hairstyle. That was the only thing that made them different from each other, um, which makes for really boring character designs. I really push myself these days to try to make sure that 
my characters will never be mistaken for one another um, and separate them by a lot of different details. So um, that's something I really encourage. And you know, that can happen even outside of character design. Like if you just like to draw landscapes and you draw the same landscapes over and over, you're gonna have the same problems. Um, especially if you wanna be a professional or do something like a comic book or an animation, you need to be able to draw a lot of things. Um, so yeah, uh, versatility is a good thing in the art world and you've gotta be careful not to get stuck uh, in a place where you're just comfortable. Now, the opposite is also a problem. Again, especially if you want to develop some kind of online presence or get into art school, it's really important that you have some semblance of um, consistency. And uh, a lot of people, I think when they are more intermediate um, at drawing and they're getting better rapidly, um, they want to be good at everything. And so they draw all kinds of random stuff. They draw in like a million different styles. And that's actually really awesome. It's really cool to do that. But I do think that um, it is a bit of a mistake if that's all you do and all of your like, uh, if you have some sort of online presence, if you put up everything that you do, every study, um, it will be really hard for people to sort of get a sense of who you are as an artist. So I also think that it's really important um, not to go too far the other direction, have two different looking of art. Um, you wanna find the things that make your work unique and let that shine through. Because if you don't do that, it's really hard to gain traction with people just because, um, yeah, consistency is something people really like and uh, you don't really have an identity in the art world if you're doing too many different things at the same time usually. So if that's something that you're interested in developing for yourself, you want to also try to make sure that there's um, an iconic look to your work so that people can identify it no matter where they see it. Now this final mistake is one that I've talked about probably in every video that it features any kind of advice um, and that is the mistake of injuring yourself or making yourself sick um, because you're working too hard or too much. Um, I've, I've, I know I've said it a thousand times before but I really can't explain how important it is that you guys don't hurt yourselves when you're practicing. Um, drawing, much like learning an instrument or um, really any kind of technical skill, it requires a lot of repetition and repetition on your body can be really damaging. Um, even though drawing isn't like, it doesn't seem very physically taxing when you're doing it, uh, if you do it for hours and hours every single day, there are little muscles and things in your hands and your wrists um, and even your back like depending on the way you're sitting in front of your computer that can cause real damage to you and make you feel like an old person when you're like 20 um, so if you start drawing when you're like 11 or so and you develop bad habits like uh, leaning over like you know cr crouching over your uh, your computer screen or your sketchbook like Gollum um, you are definitely going to have some problems when you're only uh, a young like college student or even in high school so uh, just you know pay attention to that stuff you guys it's really important that you take care of yourself especially if you want drawing to be your job because um, unlike being an athlete or something there's really no age cap on it you can keep drawing even when you're like 80 so if you take good care of yourself um, that's something you could really uh, achieve for yourself um, but if you hurt yourself really badly then your career is gonna have to end um, um, when your body gives out basically so yeah just you know take breaks stand up do stretches and try not to land yourself in a wrist splint because it's really sad when that happens how many of these mistakes have you guys made or do you even consider them mistakes I'm not sure how some of these are going to be taken. Um, they're just things that I found that I used to do that caused some detriment to me, but I know there's sort of controversy about, especially about like consistency versus versatility and all of that. Um, but yeah, I'm really interested to see what you guys think your like greatest mistakes are as artists down in the comments. Um, uh, what is your major like crutches and what do you think uh, gives you the hardest time um, when you are trying to draw? I think uh, a lot of these can either lead to burnout or just cause problems with um, getting your work out there, which I think are the main things that I always worry about. Um, but yeah, anyway, thank you so much for watching till the end. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and that you're having a good day. And uh, I will see you guys next week in my next video. Bye. Hey, what are you still doing here? Are you waiting to hear about my red bubble where I have uh, shirts and notebooks and stickers? Um, because uh, that's what ha that's what's happening. There, look, look at my red bubble. It's great. <laughs>
there's a link in the description um, if you want to buy any of the stuff or you can just look at it um, and if you have any requests for more merchandise and like designs that I could add to the store please let me know in the comments because it's brand new and I only have one design yet um, so yeah that'd be super helpful all right see you guys later a big thank you to my patrons including BB Dave Ryan Young Vilka Christy Stewart Adrian Delport Muffins McGee Paynamel Cal Pompon Laura Buter French Fry Bird Elizabeth Albin Riley James Super Pixel Angela Taylor Helm and Kearney, Violet Wilkes, blah 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 blah, Kate Makins, Addie Visual, Den, and Liv Likes to Draw. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to hear your name at the end of one of these videos, or would like to see my YouTube art earlier than the YouTube video comes out, um, you can become a patron too. Just check out the description box for a link to that. Thank you guys so much for your support.